In this video, we're going to learn about a concept called memoization. Memoization is a programming technique which we can use to speed up our functions, and we can use it to do this whenever we have an expensive function, that is one that takes a long time to execute. So I'm going to start out by breaking the idea down as simply as possible, and then we're going to actually write some code to memoize our functions in order to speed them up. So this memoization concept relies on the idea of a cache. Now generally when we execute a function, that function usually goes through whatever computations it needs to perform and often returns a result. But we're going to add a little extra ingredient, so to speak, to our memoize functions, and that extra ingredient is going to be the cache. Now, even though the term cache might sound a little bit foreign to you, all it is really is a plain old object. And when we run the memoize version of our function, the memoize version, when it sees whatever arguments it's given, is going to ask the question, have we seen that argument or those arguments before? Now, if we have, it's going to go to the cache, or that object, and retrieve the result directly. However, if we haven't seen the particular argument or arguments before, we're actually going to store that argument in the results of the computation that we perform on that argument in the object or the cache, so that we can retrieve them the next time around without having to go through the expensive computational process again and again and again. So, just for the sake of this video, and for the explanation, I'm going to intentionally write a very slow-running function. So, I'll create a constant, and I'm going to call this ridiculous slow function, because this is going to be a pretty ridiculous function. It's not going to be a function that you would really see in a real setting, but I just want to use something that's going to execute slowly, because what I want to get to is implementing the memoization part of things. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a function that's going to take a number, we'll make it as an arrow function, and then we'll create a for loop. We'll say let i equal zero, if i is less than or equal to that number, and then we'll increment i, i plus plus. And then we're going to say if i equals that number, we're just going to return i. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a really, really large number, so this takes a little bit of time to execute. Like I said, this is a ridiculous slow function. Absurd. And normally, the function that you would see with this example is a recursive Fibonacci function. But I think this will be a simpler example for now and serve the purpose. So let's say if I invoke this function, and I'm going to pass in a number. I'm going to pass in 2 billion. That's 2 with 9 zeros. And then I'm going to console log this. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that after I hit return, there was a little bit of a pause. So it took actually about a second for this to run. And what we can do is we can actually use console.time and then console.timeEnd. And that'll give us an idea of approximately how long this function takes to execute. So let's go ahead once again and try to run that. And we can see here it took 1,535 milliseconds or so. So now let's take a look at something. Let's say that we wanted to actually execute this function again. And we wanted to execute it with that same huge number, the 2 billion here. Right, so we're going to execute it here, and then we're going to execute it here again. So let's run it and see what happens. So what you can see is that each time it executed, there was quite a bit of a little pause there before we saw the result in the console. And you can see, actually, that the first one took about 1,535 milliseconds, second one, 1,533 milliseconds. So they both took about the same amount of time. And this is where we can bring the memoization in. Here we're executing this function twice, both with the same value. So the first time, of course, we need to go through this computation. But the second time, let's try to memoize it so that instead of going through the computation, we can just retrieve the value from the cache or the cache object. So in order to memoize this function, this is the format that we're going to follow. We're going to actually create a function. We'll call it memoize. And this function is going to return another function. This memoize function is going to get past the slow function. So the slow function is going to come in here as an argument. And then once we flesh this out, this inner function is going to be kind of a souped up function. It's going to be the memoized function. So let's see how we're going to go about doing that. First of all, we're going to create our cache 
or our object cache. And we'll do that here. We'll declare a const, we'll call it cache, and set that to be an empty object. Let's comment out this stuff here. And I think it's helpful to look ahead at how we're actually going to use this function, this memoize function. So what we're going to be doing ultimately is we are going to be calling memoize and we're going to pass in our slow function and we'll save that to a new variable or a constant. We'll call it fast function. So as you can see, our memoize function is going to be passed the slower function. And essentially the memoize function is going to turn the slower function into kind of a superhero, a sped up version of itself, so to speak. So what we're going to focus on now is this inner function, which is going to be returned. So let's ask ourselves the question, what is this return function? What does it need to do? Well, this function needs to do a few things. And one of those things is we need to check the cache, the cache object, to see if we've seen the argument or arguments that are getting passed in before. Now, if we have seen the argument or arguments, those will have been stored in the cache object along with the result of calling the function with that argument or arguments. So all we need to do is look it up in the cache object and retrieve the result. Now, if we haven't seen the argument or arguments, we're going to need to store it in the cache object for next time. So we don't have to go through the computation again. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to return the result of our newly memoized function. So let's continue on now fleshing this out. We basically established the shell of this memoized function. We talked about how we pass it a slow function and it returns to us a memoized version of that function. So here we return the memoized version of the slow function and we're storing it in this variable fast function. So then we would call fast function and we could call it with that huge number that we previously passed into ridiculous slow function. So this is how we're going to end up using it. Now, going back to this memoize function, this is going to take a function, which we'll call fn for short. And as you can see in this case, that function is going to be this ridiculous slow function. So this whole thing is getting passed in here. Now in this inner function, that's going to get returned. We're going to use the rest parameter, the ES six rest parameter, which I actually have a video on if you want to check out. And we're going to pass in a rest parameter, which we're going to call args. So this is going to represent any arguments that we want to pass in. And by using the rest parameter here, we give ourselves flexibility to pass in any number of arguments that we might want. In this case, we're only passing one argument. Now here's where we need to go and check the cache object. We can say, if the arguments passed in exist in this cache as a property in the cache, let's just retrieve the value. So this would be the case here where if we call this function twice, and the first time through we had already stored this value in the cache, this would check to see if that argument was in the cache, and if so, it would just return us the value, which would be this big number. But if that wasn't the case, we would actually perform the computation, which we're going to do right now. We'll call that result. And that result is going to be what we get back from invoking the function that was passed in, in this case, ridiculous slow function, with the arguments that were passed in. So in this case, this 2 billion. So we do the computation and we store it in a constant, which we're calling result. And now there's two things that we want to do. Of course, we want to return this result out of the function. But before we do that, let's go ahead and store it in the cache so that next time we don't have to do it again. So let's go ahead and put it in the cache. We can say cache at the args equals the result. So now it's in the cache object and we'll return the result. So now is the fun part. Now we can see the result of our work. We can see if we've actually gone ahead and sped up this function. So let's uncomment out these things here. We'll cut this line and we'll come down here. And instead of console.logging ridiculous slow function, we'll console.log fast function with the same number. And let's do that twice. So we're going to run it here and we're going to run it here. So now what do you think is going to happen? You remember before there was a lag each time that we ran this function. Well, let's go ahead and run it. 
And hopefully what you could see is that the first time there was a little bit of a lag, but the second time it ran almost instantaneously. Because we use console.time, you can even see here that the first one took about 1,534 milliseconds, whereas the second one took 0.129 milliseconds. So can we explain what happened? Well, the first time this function ran, that argument, the 2 billion, came in. We checked the cache to see if we had that argument before, and it didn't find it, so it actually ran through the computation, right? It ran through this ridiculous slow function. It took a little bit of time, it took a little bit more than one second. It then went ahead and stored the argument and the result of calling that argument in the cache, and it returned the result back out to us. Since it stored it in the cache, the second time we ran it, it was almost instantaneous. Because when this function was run here, we again checked the cache, but this time we found in the cache that we had seen this argument previously. So all we had to do was return the previously computed value. So in this video, I tried to explain the concept of memoization and how we could use it to optimize the performance of our functions, expensive functions, functions that take a long time to execute. If you enjoyed this video and you feel like you got something out of it, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.